Hi, Robin. Welcome to the third episode of Impact Players. It's a delight having you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So to begin with, how have you spent the last three months, the lockdown? I mean, it's, it's hard on everyone. How have you managed? As you said, it's been hard, you know, staying at home. Uh, it has its perks and its, and its downs as well, you know, ups and downs. Uh, for me as an athlete, I always want to be training. And me as a person, I'm a very outdoorsy person. I love being outdoors. And living in Goa, mm-hmm. you've got beaches, you've got nice trails to run at, cycle on, take the family out. Mm-hmm. You know, not being able to do that, you are constrained to your four walls, but, you know, it's a blessing as well. Some people are out there fighting the virus head on, you know, and protecting us. True. So, True. you know, thanks to them, we're safe. Uh, and mm-hmm. I'd rather be safe than, you know, catch the virus and have the people around me catch the virus, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, just fighting it till it goes away. But that said, Goa is a lot safer than most other places in India. Definitely, most definitely. I think we were one of the few places uh, in the beginning to go into a green or an orange zone, uh, mm-hmm. which is great. But again, you know, you, you got to make sure that it completely goes away from the country. And uh, that, that's what we're all waiting for. And you, as, we, as we keep seeing the news, keep hearing people talk about it, you don't know who has it and who can contract it and who is asymptomatic. So... The best you can do is make sure that you're safe and your family is safe. And as they say, you know, it begins from home. Safety also begins from home. So if your family is Mm. safe, the next family does the same and the next household. And that's how the country gets safer for all of us. Yeah, so the phrase charity begins at home is (laughs) never has never been more applicable than here. So uh, starting with your career, how was your childhood? Where did it all begin? Not just your football, but Uh, as a kid, you were born in Noida, right? Correct. I was born in uh, Noida. Uh, always been this, as I've been told, you know, that I was, I've always been this hyperactive kid, uh, always wanting to get outdoor, always running around, always full of energy. And uh, my parents thought, you know what, we've got to put him in line. We've got, to, we've got to get this energy into something productive or make sure that, you know, he's getting something productive. And the best thing was sport. So it, I've always been a kid involved in sport. And when I say involved, I even mean my family. My grandfather, my father's father was also a footballer. Um, and he oh. was also the organizer of the Durin Cup, Subroto Cup, till his demise. Um, he also played football. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's, it, it runs in the family as such. And uh, that's, I think that's how it began for me as well, just being a sporty child. And then obviously along the lines, uh, I had to make a decision. And we all know what that decision was. Um, my family has always been very supportive of, of me mm-hmm. and uh, you know me playing a sport. It started with cricket. Um, they, they they said as long as you love what you do, you go ahead and we'll support you as much as as much as we can. And that's what they did. You know they were mm-hmm. they supported me with cricket in the beginning, and then um, mm-hmm. now they support me at football. You know I think my family is still my biggest support system when it comes to uh, let's say fans of football. They're my biggest mm-hmm. critics and my biggest fans as well. That's great. So how did uh, cricket happen? Let's start with cricket. How did cricket happen? Uh, again, like just like most part of North India, gully cricket. Gully cricket mm-hmm. transformed into a uh, professional setup. Um, I was with wow. Sumit Dogra Cricket Academy. Uh, oh, okay. I was playing really well. Uh, and then just randomly one fine day it was rainy. And I decided to play football and then one training session of football turned into going into an academy and the coach saying, listen, just come, we'll see. Uh, the coach was an Adi Barua. He said, just just come play, enjoy yourself and we'll see what happens from there. And that's how it began. But coming back to the cricket bit, it was it was something that I still love. I, I still like watching cricket. You know, if you give me a bat and a ball, I wouldn't say I don't want to play. I, I still play gully cricket. I love it. You know, there, mm-hmm. and... Uh, it's it's always been a liking, but uh, if you tell me if I have to pick one, it'll definitely be football. Clearly. So what were you in cricket? A batsman, bowler, wicket? So I was an opening bowler and an opening batsman as well. But uh, as you as you begin with one, one's the calm guy batting and the other one's a hard hitter. That was me. 
Uh, so I always used to be one of the, that used to just attack any bowler that's coming my way. And that's what we mm-hmm. did. I just attacked bowlers for the first six to seven overs. And then I bowled my spell of three overs in a spell of six. And then I waited. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was it. And uh, how did the transition to football happen? Because so, of a rainy uh, day? Yes. So it was raining. Uh, the academy was closed. Uh, playing football. We decided to go play at a school. My fr- one of my, I don't, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a proper memory. I'm trying to think of it. And I think I just landed up. Let me just say, I just landed up at the academy where there was football happening. And uh, the boys, me, the coach, everyone got along. And then I just decided to, you know, train for football. So one fine day, the coach of the academy, Mr. Anadi Barua, decided, listen, we're going to Chandigarh for a tournament. Uh, we'd like for you to come along. And I said, mm-hmm. Why not? And I went to Chandigarh and that's where St. Stephen's School Chandigarh asked me that, would you like to come and uh, play for us? We'd, we'd give you a full scholarship. All you have to do is play football for the, for the school. And that's what mm-hmm. I did. For the first year and a half, I played football for St. Stephen's, uh, after which I was picked up by Chandigarh Football Academy. And that's where my first, uh, what's the word? Uh, I won't say... I would say a taste of sadness or my mm-hmm. first learning of uh, a no came. You know, I've always been very mentally strong to say, you know what, no matter what happens, I will keep going. But mm-hmm. it's always, it always breaks your heart to hear a no. And um, or it always breaks your heart for someone to tell you that you're not good enough to be a footballer. Mm-hmm. And that's what Chandigarh Football Academy did. On yeah. what basis uh, did they pick that? Because clearly you had the <laughs> skills. <laughs> so I went there. And uh, I think um, I missed a penalty for them. And uh, it was in Delhi. It was in Delhi where I missed a penalty for them. And I went back to the academy and that's where it all started. Uh, Randomly, they decided, oh, you know what? We have to test the players that are available at the academy. Maybe some of them aren't fit to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, so I was there. There There were a few coaches sitting down along the sideline discussing who mm. stays, who doesn't stay. Um, mm. Yeah, and one of them turned around and, and said, I'd love to keep you, but there are people who say you're not good enough. I said, mm. okay, if I'm not good enough, not for you, I'm not good enough. For me, I'm still going to be the best version of myself. And I'm still going to keep playing football because I love the sport. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not that I, I, I don't want to play because you've said no. If you mm. said no, that's going to push me harder now. Now that I, I know that maybe I'm not good enough, I need to work harder. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. So that's an attitude that's driven you all your life, I've seen. Because, you know, this, this pushing yourself and uh, yeah. if somebody criticizes you, you want to prove yeah. them wrong. So that's a great attitude to have because that's what will propel you forward. Like they say, when you fall, yeah. fall forward. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think that's, that's very true. If I fell, I've never been someone to just loathe around in that negativity if i if i fall in yes i will lose sleep over it but that's only one night the next day mm-hmm. i will make sure that i go to the ground and i leave everything once i enter that pitch whether it's a training pitch or a match pitch i leave everything on the sideline yeah. so robin how did the tata football academy come about uh, did they pick you when uh, you came back from chandigarh or how, how was it so i went home obviously uh as soon as I got told uh, that I'm not a part of Chandigarh Football Academy, you know, there was no point staying there. So I decided that very night as well uh, to leave. So I, I went home, I recollected my thoughts and I said, listen, I'm not giving up. There's no chance I'm giving up. And uh, mm. I, I went to, luckily for me, in the next couple of months, the Tata Football's annual trials were coming up. So when I say mm. annual trials, the, the course at Tata Football Academy is a course of four years in totality. The first two years you okay. train and the next four mm-hmm. year, uh, next two years you play every professional tournament that you can get into, right? Mm-hmm. So that being said, we, we reached uh, Tata Football Academy and I joined the trials um, and mm-hmm. uh, I worked. I made sure I worked. So I worked and I worked and uh, I got to the trials. Uh, Ranjan Chaudhary was the coach over there, the head coach over there at that point of time. And uh, he said, listen, we see potential in you. Uh, and we'd love mm. to keep you. That is if you'd like mm. to stay. And mm. obviously, it's one of the best academies 
um, of the country. So I decided mm-hmm. to say yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, and I'd love to play. And uh, mm-hmm. yes, that's how the the first professional contract also came about, which was East Bengal. You know, so that okay. was there as well. Uh, trained for mm-hmm. them for four years. Captain Jharkhand in the meantime uh, led the team, led Tata Football Academy whenever they seemed was the right choice. Um, yes, played four years there. Came out of the academy into East Bengal as one of the mm-hmm. highest paid cadets on their roster. So you know that yeah. that really did help me with my confidence as well because you know it, as much as people say you got to be fit to play, it, it's also a big mental battle. You know, and mm-hmm. confidence is key to everything in life, and I think that's that's where it began. So, what were the key lessons you learned in the Tata Football Academy? Firstly, you learn to work hard. You learn to make sure you give it your all at day in day out at training, and uh, mm-hmm. that's something that I've kept. all the time with me you know there are there are there are 48 boys including the junior and the senior team or there are at least 44 boys at the academy at each point of given time uh, and you got to be your best because as a footballer you never be on, want to be on the bench you know so every day you have to make sure you give it your all and i also learn about you know nutritional values rest recovery physiotherapy what are muscle injuries you know all of these things as as you're growing up as a child you never care you know you you actually never care but double sessions uh make you realize how important it is to sleep on time how important your meals are how how important your hydration levels are which i've been able to take into you know professional professional teams as well if you're hydrated you're rested well you will perform at your peak start a football academy is uh, a social initiative by uh, the tata steel uh Jamshedpur is the city, which is also known as Tata Nagar. It's the quaint little city, completely self-sufficient and self-funded by Tata Steel. Also, the Jharkhand government does help, but uh, again, Tata Football Academy means you're you're helped by Tata Steel, which also, in terms, has other great academies in the city as well. Tata Athletics being one of them, and Tata Archery being also one of them. Well, and they also, as we all know, sponsor athletes from in and around the country. There's a famous story of how you were picked by East Bengal. You performed against them. Yeah, right. I did. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah. So even before that, uh, you know, there's the. Uh, I think a lot of people don't know this side of the story where me and the striker, both both of us, his name was Jagtar Singh. Both of us had eye flu. Oh. Day before the game. we went to walk on the game and we could not pick our heads off cuz the sun was just there and we you couldn't look up and we decided this what are we going to do and um we i think there was i think it was the one of the service service guys of the hotel it's it's a tiny little hotel in uh, in kolkata itself it was in the ifa shield uh so yeah we we got drawn with east bengal at one of our games uh, but the day the day before i think me the striker uh one of the other players and the goalkeeper all had a star in our eyes and we had no idea what we're going to do how we're going to play and the the service guy said listen use ice and use rose water so me me and the other striker we were just in our room the whole night putting rose water with ice so that you know we could just open our eyes when we reached the stadium we still couldn't lift our eyes so the whole warm up we were just doing it with our eyes closed and then when the game started we were like listen this is do or die this is what we have to do these are the people we have to beat and we'll make sure we beat them and uh, great game great great game where we worked we worked as a team we and we beat them i think we beat them 3-2 if i'm not mistaken and uh, thankfully i got a brace with the help of my teammates But it was wow. a great game. I still remember the last, la- the third goal that we scored. Uh, it was a corner taken, and we went on a counter attack, and uh, it was started by me and the other striker, and finished off by both of us as well. It, it was. I have goosebumps talking about it. Wow. Literally, it was. It was an amazing feeling. And then, not just that. The the great part is that when we walked off the pitch as academy boys, East Bengal with their whole. Uh, but the whole uh, fan base gave us all a standing ovation it was it was an unbelievable uh, 
memory for me. It's definitely an unbelievable memory for me. And that led me on to East Bengal. Uh, so did they approach you? Or, uh, or, yes. I mean, how yes. did they approach you is the question. Um, so when we went back to the academy, obviously we were happy. We just beat in East Bengal as well. So we went out and uh, we reached back to the academy. And then we hear this, this chat or this rumor that East Bengal officials are in the city. So we're like, okay, fair enough. Maybe they like a player. And uh, later on, uh, you get to know that they're, that they're there for you. So, you know, we sat down. Uh, they said, listen, we love what you do. We were completely sure that we want to sign you on to East Bengal. And uh, we'd like to give you a two-year contract. I still remember the guy. His name was King Kuda. He came to the city. Mm. And, uh, yeah. And with, I think one of the questions I asked him is, are you not angry with me? Because we all know how strong Bengal's football support is. You know, I think one of my questions was, listen, we'll, I, I'd love to play for you, but are you not angry with me? I just beat mm-hmm. you guys. Or did we uh-huh. just beat you guys? It's like, no, you guys were great. And that, that's, that's the end of it. You guys were great. You beat us. You were the better team on the day. And now we'd like to have you on our roster as well. And if, you, if you'd love to come, I said, yes, it's East Bengal. I'd love to come. Why not? Uh-huh. And then it was just an amazing year that year to, into East Bengal as well. So uh, when did you start playing for them? That very uh, season or right. was it the subsequent no, season? No, no, no. I started as soon as I finished my, my tenure at Tata Football Academy. And the following year, I joined uh, uh, West Bengal. I played for West Bengal. We had time on our hands between the two seasons as well. So I represented West Bengal and uh, we won some post trophy as well over there which was mm-hmm. great. And I think that, that just made my initiation into Bengal football a lot easier. Um, mm-hmm. Spending time there uh, with the Santosh Trophy, all the boys from different clubs of Calcutta were there representing West Bengal and I was amongst one of them. And it was a great, mm-hmm. great, uh, great season. Great season to you know, kick off with the Santosh Trophy and then at East Bengal, the derbies. Wow, it's... Mm-hmm. It, it was. I have some fond memories of the place. Yeah, I'm coming to the derbies, but the first game for <laughs> East Bengal. What was it like? It was. It was amazing. Were you under pressure yeah. because it's a massive, uh, massive move, a professional move? Uh, no. Um, for me, I've always been somebody who's who's happy, who's uh, light-hearted, uh, who's always joking around. Uh, yes, pressure gets to you at days, and. Uh, Probably when I look back and think, was I under pressure? No. I just wanted to play football. It's, it's the same boy that wanted to play football in his colony that wants to play in front of any number of fans that come to watch me or my team play. It's still that young boy wanting to just kick a ball around with his friends. So your first derby? Yeah. How oh my God. Uh, I think it was 90,000 people there. What? 90,000 really? people there. <laughs> uh, it's it was a great year. I um, yeah, everything's like when you say derby, everything's in my head together now because it's just like a flow of memories and a flood of memories. Uh, we were a great team. Uh, we had Trevor Morgan as a coach that year. Me and the strike over there, Tolgi Osby. We had a great partnership. We were scoring goals left, right, and center, which was great. As a striker, you love scoring goals, and we took that flow into the derby as well. We beat them. Um, uh, I think I think I scored a brace, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was it was great. But that time, the I won't say that time, but one of the when those number of derbies were happening, the fans were diehard. Whether you win or you lose, you know, there mm-hmm. were there were times when they've come and said, "That's fine, you can lose from anybody, but make sure that doesn't happen with Mohan Bagan." You know, it's one of them. It, as much as it's a win, it's also bragging mm-hmm. rights in the city of Kolkata for your fans. And they always say, we want our bragging rights. We want the city to be Lal Hulut, as they call it, which is uh, yellow and red. Um, Uh So, yeah. So, again, coming to the derby, 90,000. It's like like a roar of people when you attack, which Uh just pushes you even quicker or faster to attack the opponent's goal. And Mm -hmm. the same thing, it's not just an attack. You play one forward or one attacking ball towards the opponent, people go crazy. And when mm-hmm. I say people go crazy, I've been a part of derbies, uh, derbies where 
the i remember one of my friends uh, i call him nabi bhai because he's older than me he got struck with a coconut because someone threw a coconut at him wow and i i also you know we we went to see a fan and we went to help a fan out because at that point of time you were allowed crackers and all of those things in the stadium you know and this is a kind of uh, this is hard to deal with for a lot of people so i'm just going to put it out there as well but there was this guy who was in the bottom stand and we heard a bomb go off mm-hmm. and then we got to know that he or someone from the above stands through it and it landed on him and burst it in in his lap like a big you know oh, those wow. diwali big bombs uh-huh. so one of those bombs bursted on him as well and he had to be rushed off so you mm-hmm. know we've been a part of all of those things as well while you're fighting on the pitch there's also fight going on in the stands as well where you have to literally have police in the middle of you and it's 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 a total atmosphere of how a derby should be we mm-hmm. on the pitch we on the fans i've got so many cuts i think most of my cuts on my eyebrows have been from derbies putting no. your head into elbows putting your ankles into tackles where you're not supposed to be diving mm-hmm. headers diving tackle it all happens it all happens and it all happens in kolkata derbies so has that changed how you played your football i mean till the time that you played a derby and uh-huh. post your your derby uh, uh, experience Uh-huh. Has it changed your? Have you become more aggressive as a footballer? I have always been aggressive. I think that's what even the country thinks of me as someone who fouls a lot. But mm-hmm. uh, I am a physical player. I love that mm-hmm. I'm a physical player. I love dominating mm-hmm. defenders, opponents in general. I I love that fact about me. I don't. I have no. I have no qualms in saying that. But will I ever hurt someone on purpose? No. But will I let you beat me easily? It's no. I I there is no chance. I this mm-hmm. is me as a person. This is this is what I play for. This is what I fight for. I fight for the badge on my chest. I will be mm-hmm. your friend for after 90 minutes or I will be your friend but after 110 minutes. But while I'm playing no, every game that I play I want to win. I'm a very bad loser. I'm a very sore loser. You won't see me around. If I've lost a game, you won't see me around. I'll probably be in my room. wanting counting down the hours till i can go train again i hate losing and i think being a part of as you said did the derbies change that i would say they they do play a role losing in general plays a role but derbies do play a role because then you then you understand the significance of a win not just for your team but also for your fans and how much they love to see you win and at the end of the day it's a spectator sport you make your fans mm-hmm. proud of the abilities that your teammates and you bring to the pitch and i'm proud of what i can bring to the pitch for my fans day in and day out i want to play a for the bat in the front and b for the fans as well and my teammates as well we all want to play to win i don't think there's any there's been a time where i have teammates who said i'm going to lose this game no i think it it's it's always been that i will play if i can't play someone else who can play will be there and your uh, four year stint at east bengal Yeah. any other experience that comes to mind anything that's outstanding that you know when you're retired you'll sit back and think of there have been good and bad as well i'll be i'll be i'll be very honest uh the bad has been where you know we've lost against uh, we had a bad stint of games where we were losing against local teams and the fans didn't accept it they're like no you stay on this pitch none of you are going home this was at a home ground at a home training ground where the fans are like we don't ex- appreciate you or we don't expect east bengal to be losing games um uh, so yes um that that that's what they, they are fan they are crazy fans they they crazy fans for a reason they don't accept losses at all and uh, that mm-hmm. being said even mohan bagan who are uh, opponents they don't they don't accept losses as well there have been times where you've gone out to a dressing room and your friends from the opponent side have turned around and said Listen, can you take me in your car? Because I don't want to go to my car. And there have been times where you, where you've heard other opponents or fans have said that, you know what, my car just got burnt. Literally, this is they. They used to keep their car in a nearby hotel, and then they used to come via, probably walk it or probably come in the team bus, just because that's how fans are. That's how crazy they could be, or that's how. 
how die hard they are crazy is not the right word die hard they are whereas if you lose they're not letting you go this is a this is a this you would categorize as a i mean it's not a bad experience it, it's yeah. it's a, it's also a good experience in many ways because yeah. then it then gives you a I flavor think, to the entire thing yeah. yeah i think there is no bad as such it's always a learning um uh, so that was definitely a learning that listen this is what can be so make sure you win so you know that's a learning for sure make sure you put that extra bit harder make sure you give that one sprint harder so you you your teammates can you know go home happy be carried out on shoulders you know so that that's that's been probably i wouldn't say the worst but yeah that's that's the negative side of the derbies as well your cars get burnt your fans come and just attack you as such um but the good part if you win believe me you walk on the street and they stop you walk on the street and they'll be like what do you want what do you want let me let me let me get it for you you know you go to a store and they're like hey no 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 discount discount straight away literally there's a discount and there'll be people that want to come and help you and walk in the house saying i am an east bengal fan i will work for you there there have been people that i've asked for homes to rent out and they've said no you're an east bengal player I'm not kidding. They, I, I love the houses that I would love to rent out. Like, no, you're an East Bengal player. I only give it to Mohan Bagan. So that, oh. that's how, that's how people are. You know, okay. that's how, that's, that's what the city can give you. But yeah, I think if I had to do it all over again, hundred percent, I would play another derby for sure. So let's go back in time a bit. Uh, yeah. When you played under sixteen for India, yeah. Did you get picked out of the Tata Academy? Yes, I played under 16. Uh, I think we went to Delhi um, for a national, and then uh, I got picked up for the under 16s from the national games while I was the captain of Jharkhand. That's how the under 16 came about. Uh, mm-hmm. I trained there for a bit. Uh, I think I wasn't able to make the cut at under 17. uh personal reasons you know people people again there was there were coaching expertise that thought maybe he's not good enough but then again as i said in the beginning i will never give up i will never ever ever give up and uh that that's what happened at under 17 i represented i try i trained i tried and then it didn't come through then the under 19s i i think i i, I joined them and then i trained again and then i finally played for the senior national day which was after the the west bengal stint for santosh trophy that's how it came about and i'm very happy i'm very happy how the whole progression of you know learning phases from the national setup brought me on to the senior national team playing for india at the age of 16 what was the experience like it's representing your country is probably the most proudest moment for any athlete be it football athletics cricket any sport you can imagine it's 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 a proud moment for me as well you know you you never go into one of any camp or any national team selection and say i've made the cut no you want to make sure that you put your best forward and you make the country proud at no matter what the tournament is and that's always been the case you know when as soon as i got the call up i was like you know what I'm not done yet. I need to push more. Now that the names come, now I need to be in the first level. Now I need to be in the last 22. You know, now I need to lead, and I want to lead by example. It's it's never when I say lead, I don't mean I need the captain's armband. No, having a voice is enough leadership for me. And mm-hmm. I've always been someone who wants to lead. Uh, I think that's a personal trait in me. I just I just I just like helping my teammates out from the front. and that's always been the case and the national team just like exposed me a lot more of how leadership could be and has to be and i've taken that forward into whatever it may be national team football club football and all of that any memories from the under 16 uh, outing we were in F- we were in germany uh, again it was we were at fc augsburg we went to the allianz arena so we've done all of that it was it was a great training uh, tenure and uh, mm-hmm. you know obviously each each time it it uh, what do you call sorry um, each time you learn something and then uh, each camp that i went on to and each time we trained abroad 
it helped me grow as an athlete and grow as a professional personally as well about your switch from uh, from a left back to the striker if you could just yeah so the the switch happened at i think the 17 and 19th camp um uh, where i was asked or not me the in general people were asked listen if you feel like you're playing out of position if you like to try out a new position you're more than welcome to put it across to us and we'll see uh i did i said listen i love attacking you know um, and i'd love to be a striker and they said maybe maybe not and then after the camp finished i went back to tata football academy and i proposed the same thing to the coaches as well and uh, they said why not you know you're you're someone who's as big as anybody we've seen in this country you will be a big menace a physical menace as well a pen, uh, presence as well as a striker and why not and that's how the whole journey began as me being a striker yes you know you you you've got to work harder to learn the new tricks and trades of the of the position but you know you learn each day it's it's not like if i was a left back i would have learned everything in one go you know you you still learn each day you still get better each day so i was lucky i had age on my side um and that's that's it you know as i said i'm i'm, I'm never afraid to take risks and i'm never afraid to work hard so that meant spending more hours on the pitch as a striker why not i will do that i still do that so the physical uh, demands on a striker are greater than those on a left back right um not really uh, the fitness levels can vary a little bit here and there whereas you know you, you got to be defensively a lot more aware from a left back perspective and your 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 body positioning as a left back changes a lot more but as a striker your your short and sharp movements your short and sharp sprints uh it all it all it all varies a little bit i would say because at the end of the day football is football you you got to know how to defend as well you know striker needs to know how to defend as well and i think that's what helped me a fair bit the fact that i had played a defender so the defensive capabilities of a striker were also a lot more easier to grasp but what i had to work was on attacking you know making sure my runs are on site making sure my sprints are on time making sure my body is faced a certain way and i learned that over the time and you know again each day you got to improve and i still feel that you know i might not be the best but i will work the hardest at some stage you uh, went to the uae and the uk yeah. this was uh, yes. this was before your east bengal stint correct right uh, so what did yes. uh, how, why did you go there and uh, how was the experience so i've always been someone who who loves to learn you know be around the pitch off the pitch i love to learn and if as if i if i would get the opportunity to play outside why not right so i went to the uae uae was my second stint the first one was the uk the uk was a, a part of a training program when i had a holiday and i'm just like i don't want to be on holiday i want to train some more so i went to the uk and there um, we got in touch with a manager or an agent Uh, me and my me and my father and said listen we we love to train uh what can we do uh we got in touch with tooting in mitcham uh reading and wimbledon to to train for in a i think in a span of 21 days in the uk so we we trained with the three teams a week a week and probably i had two games and uh, the reading coach and the wimbledon coach said listen we we love your physical presence your your fit you want to work hard but again you know how does the work permit work i said you guys have to tell me i watch the premier league for me the premier league is you joining a club club taking care of everything else so at the end of it the work permit didn't work out but again for me if, even if i played that i would have want to bring all of my learnings from the outside back into the country and make sure that i can take my talent and my learnings forward and help the country progress as a nation as well be it be it at club football or be it at national levels or international levels and that's what i did at the uk you know i was like i've learned a lot let me take this back and put it into my everyday use when it comes to playing in playing in india and then i realized that you know what this is helping me improve and then that's where i went to dubai as well saying if it's helping me improve i want to go to a new nation let me go somewhere closer let me go to an asian as such an asian country 
and that's when dubai came about i went and i i trained and played with uh, trained played and trialed with fc fujaira uh, pretty much i think it's an hour and a half from dubai or two hours if i'm not mistaken or at least it was at that point of time two hours from dubai closer to sharjah but then they came through they said we'd like to have you for a season which was six six and a half months but then again when i took that back to tata football academy they said listen we'd love for you to finish and the choice is yours i chose to stay because i wanted to finish my training as well back at tata football academy and i think because what i learned from international waters or international countries that helped me progress into being a stronger athlete when i came back to india did the india seniors debut happen uh, during east bengal yes i was at east bengal i think i, I still remember this uh, tolge osby uh my strike partner turned around and uh, went on camera and said if national team coach is you're watching pick robin singh <laughs> and i was like why really? did you do that <laughs> he's like cuz you're meant to be there you're, you're good i said thank you but if my opportunity comes i will take it but thank you for thinking that i have the ability to represent my nation and a, a few a few weeks or months after that my first national team call up came and i was ecstatic you know national team is national team you have no more under 17 or under 16 you're the best in any age group so the debut was against uh, the maldives in the nehru cup 2012 yes i think maldives uh, the nehru cup was a great tournament delhi tournament great tournament it was raining it was mucky and me being from kolkata i was already used to it so i loved it but uh, i think we ended up winning the tournament and uh, i have this memory of my uh, family in the stands and uh, i think it it came down to penalties it was it, i was like i'll take it i think it also comes down to me because i missed it i was like i'll take it if i miss i miss you know it's one of those because it, it can't go worse it was a really missed one and so you know the feeling now you just want to score and i ended up taking the first penalty it was it was a great feeling and i think it was one of my favorite penalties top corner left side and i think that just boosted the team as well so it was great we won the tournament so what was the day before i ask everybody this before the international yeah. debut or before their first professional tournament in golf what was the yeah. night like before that were you obviously you were nervous to an extent because nervousness yeah. allows you to perform better but what was it like right. i think I've, i've never paid attention to this but i think my coping mechanism has to be enjoying or uh, you know having a light hearted moment with my teammates so i think it plays at the back of your head but you don't let it take over you and i think the night before you just you eat you you spend time with your teammates you have a chat you rest you recover you hydrate and just look forward to the game and me being a delhi boy the game being in delhi i think i was like this is this is the moment this is my moment i'm in delhi in front of family friends the city why not and winning the tournament in delhi it was a great moment i think for all of us yes for me it's always special because it was it was in delhi it was my first tournament as a senior senior professional and your first goal for india came against china, the chinese taipei team right yeah. in 2013 yeah. yeah how did that come about i remember the goal it was a cross put in by rahim nabi by the way the guy who got hit with the coconut on his face uh crossed <laughs> it in he was sitting on the bench with me by the way and he got changed before me he wants up he went on as substitute before me and he said you see me with the ball you get in the box i will put it on your head you score and if you score you come running to me as it done <laughs> so he i remember him running down the right side and him crossing the ball and i jumped up and headed the ball in and he's like i told you so i said yes you did and that was a, probably i think we that was a very physical game as well uh and it's a great goal you know you, you can never you can never sum up the 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 emotion of a goal it's everybody says it's just a happy moment but if you ask somebody to emphasize on it you'll never be able to you've mentioned that your favorite goal though you can't emphasize on every goal your favorite goal is the one you scored in warm in the world cup qualifiers 2015 yeah. yes in bangalore it was a three touch goal if i'm not mistaken gurpreet gurpreet sunil sunil to me me on my 
right foot top corner in a rain and uh, again that goal as well uh, when i when i was playing i said i'm going to me and the coach we we got along really well so i said i'm going to score for you today i said okay show me and then i went on and then that three touch goal came about and uh, me and the defender uh, also had this undercurrent because the coach coach literally blasted me at, in in guam itself saying you're probably one of the biggest boys in this team and you let that little boy dominate you and it, that that got me fired up saying listen they're going to come to my country they're not going to do it to me again and scoring and me going to the coach and saying i told you so you know it, it's 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 a happy moment it's never a told you so to demean someone but it's 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 always a moment where you know you, your actions and your abilities come together and your thoughts come together and that is always always as a human that's i think a lot of people will second me on my thoughts over here saying if your mind and your body agree to something it's it's literally in sync and that that's what the moment was when i when i turned around and put my head to it and i worked harder you know it was a great goal and i thank my teammates for it for sure it's always a memory because it was a world cup qualifier not a lot of people get to do that yeah.